Hello everyone, I'm Scott Roberts with the Astronomy Outreach Network, um, and I'm with Dr. Linda Spilker, who is the mission project scientist, right? Is that right. The, correct? Okay. Uh, for the Cassini mission to Saturn. And um, uh, Linda, you got started on this mission how long ago? I actually got started on Cassini in 1988. Uh, I was part of a team to define what science would you do if you go back to Saturn. And before that, I worked on Voyager and had been there for the Voyager flybys, and so it was a perfect follow-on yeah. to look forward to the next mission that became Cassini. So you've always been involved in planetary science. Has it always been at JPL? My whole career, since I graduated from college, has been at JPL. It's been 40 years. So how did the mission evolve? I mean, what was the crucible that created Cassini? Well, it was really the Voyager 1 flyby mm -hmm. through the Saturn system that led to Cassini. We had to fly by this giant moon Titan, and one of the key goals was to look through Titan's thick atmosphere to the surface. Mm -hmm. But all of the instruments we had on Voyager could not see through the haze. We didn't have the right filters on the cameras. So immediately, a group of scientists got together and said, let's go back to Saturn. We need to understand Titan. Titan has chemistry very much like maybe the early Earth had. Mm -hmm. And so right there in the early 80s, we started thinking about a mission to go back carrying a probe to parachute through the atmosphere, reveal the surface of Titan, and land on the surface. Wow. This whole mission's been called like the most ambitious, uh, you know, planetary mission ever. I would, we'll agree. I would agree. I oh, think yeah. it, absolutely. I'll get, I'll get to this as we go along, and you can tell I'm very excited and very, um, uh, a little nervous too, you know, to have you here. When you look back on the original thoughts about the mission, did everything evolve the way you hoped? Well, Cassini is really a mission of discovery, and those discoveries really shaped and sculpted what we did. Mm -hmm. A key example is finding geysers coming out of the South Pole of Enceladus, out of these four cracks that we called tiger stripes. And we went from in the four-year prime mission having just three flybys of Enceladus to adding 20 more right. over the next nine years. So we let discoveries in, in many ways guide what we do and how we do it. And you guys got over 600 gigabytes of data. We talked about this a little bit earlier and you said it was like, uh, you know, the information is coming through like a, you know, a fire hose. I would think that you would only get the top level of the discoveries and, and, the, and the data and stuff. So what was that like uh, trying to interpret all this stuff? Well, like you said, Scott, imagine drinking out of a fire hose and how just a little bit of water you would get in trying to take that drink. And so in a sense, we were like skimming off the obvious top discoveries and then just storing up and archiving the rest of the data. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like we've put together some of the obvious pieces of the puzzle, but the more subtle pieces to complete that picture mm -hmm. of the Saturn system have yet to be done. So scientists are working, in fact, it will probably be decades before we completely go through all of the data and understand it. And such a tremendously successful mission, mm -hmm. even from the data we've seen so far. 